healing from imbalance. I know for certain, I think all of you know that there's a deep place within us where we have always known who we truly are and our inability to call it forward has created lists of conditions and diagnoses that the medical world kind of hands to us. And that seems to undermine who we are as a soul because it attempts to label us and like create like like it's a problem instead of us seeing that this is a part of the journey that we need to move through this this adversity this 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 challenge whether it manifests in the body as disease whether it manifests as a, an event in our lives that feels like a tragedy it's calling us to get more in touch with our soul um so that we can really move forward the part of us that is our truth can work against us if we don't honor ourselves. It can manifest as a feeling of isolation, feeling unseen and misunderstood. And um, it can also be a person who has the ability to see through things and feels crazy because there's no outer validation or support. And uh, I can't seem to move the box so I can read this, but it can manifest as repressed anger and resentment against all who have harmed us, causing us physical symptoms. It can cause rebellion or the pressure to prove oneself in a chosen field. It can bring about obsessive tendencies. It can create a deep desire to belong. And so one seeks a feeling of home and connection, but never feels at home within because the treasures are pushed away and seen as a problem. So we give our power away. This is very old paradigm stuff that we may relate to. The mix of all these things can cause depression, repressed anger, mood swings, and confusion. So waking up to us is not some new revelation. Many of us have known who we are all along. We've been very awake but and totally disorientated by this artificial world. But the challenge is in fully bringing one's true nature to the surface and not allowing oneself to buy into the projections that others may throw or feel insecure for not fitting in or like one is trapped and stuck here and not supposed to be here. So healing from imbalance goes across the board. Um, and again, when we go into these deep plunges into the dark night of the soul, we're not just releasing ourselves from any hooks or any attachments or any agreements. We're also rediscovering the parts of ourselves that we might not have brought into expression. And there, everything about these alignments right now is really helping us to do that. And I see more and more every day, just people just wanting to do what they know that they're called to do. Um, and, and so how can we feel that that's going to offer abundance when you feel like taking that step isn't something that's going to provide a paycheck? I mean, this transition is very much what this Pluto retrograde is all about. This is what we are in this like sort of self-evaluation and transition to begin to address. Do we want to stay put where we live? Do we want to move? Do we want to get out of a relationship? Do we want to change our job? You know, everything about our relationship to the system we've been answering to is is coming down to what inner work we need to do to reconcile with the way we relate to authority in general, or the way we relate to the law of structure, the way we relate to where we take our gifts and abilities and 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 what foundation are, or are, are we operating from? Is that something that we are hired to do from somebody else? Or is it something that we can begin to do on our own? Can we juggle both maybe for a little while? Sure. So anyway, many have allowed their own treasures and uniqueness to become a curse in a personal prison. And um, it's, 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 it's a lot because of the thousands of years of dark history of persecution and being silenced or having the things that you bring to the table um, just not be fully embraced. And when we unlock our own shell and barriers and resistances to stepping into our power and free that part of ourselves, you know, this really gives permission for everybody else to join in and say, wow, if you're doing it, I can do it. So instead of seeing what's wrong, we got to see what's right. You know, we have to free ourselves and embrace our divine gifts. Do it for you and not for anyone else. Do it regardless of who you might need to leave in your life. Do it because it's your truth. It's your power. It's your temple. It's your home. The symptoms just mean you're crying out for release and you don't want to judge it. You want to love it. Um, and a lot of people are feeling a lot in their bodies. And uh, so 
I love this from uh, Lisa Renee, energeticsynthesis.com uh, and just how she really puts this. When incarnated into a physical human form, we evolve through the stages of the procession of equinoxes. This progression takes us through all the 12 layers of archetypal forces that hold instruction sets for the universal human body structure, as well as levels of DNA transmission. As the sun moves through each constellation, we receive frequency exchanges of intelligent instruction sets that are designed for the human body to evolve towards increasing DNA activation and spiritual ascension, which are alchemical forces being transmitted into the earth field. When astrological alignments occur through major conjunctions made between planetary and stellar bodies, forces of alchemy occur, which alter frequency current and manifest new creations that help to expand consciousness at planetary and personal levels. With the war over consciousness, humanity is undergoing psychological operations to prevent them from actually participating or being aware that these stellar forces are being transmitted to the earth for purposes of biospiritual evolution. So everything like the climate change, the transhumanism, the transgender, in a time where these greater planetary energies are assisting us and recognizing our deep relationship with Mother Earth and how the Earth responds to us, and that this integration of polarity is helping us to get in touch with our masculine and feminine. You know, everything that is part of this indoctrination is just how it's all being weaponized, as we know. So hold on, let me just grab some water if you guys want to just have a quick break here. I'm just going to grab some water here. So if I'm not articulating myself as best as I can, it's just been nuts my end, just lots of like crazy energies. And that's why I really look forward to working like more one-on-one -on -one with people, because when it comes to initiations, we're all going through it in, in our own personal and unique ways. And uh, just being able to kind of look directly at what's going on with you you know, is much more helpful because so much is coming up for people that they think they've or thought they already have cleared. And, and it's pretty wild because, um, you know, you could feel that you are awakened to something, but find that there's so much that's still inside of you that is just not quite there yet. And, uh, there's no doubt. I mean, if, if you're a really sensitive person that everything that we're witnessing I mean, it just feels like it's just gone, you know, way too far. And uh, it's really just difficult, especially people with children. I mean, it's not easy to just pull your kids out and just be able to homeschool them and just get yourself off the grid. But uh, it's just the importance of coming together and staying united and just being a strong community is really just where it's at. I just uh, interviewed um, some folks about all of this. Um, and what they're doing, you know, to farmers and it's like, we, we really have to band together. And that's what I really feel like these nodal shifts is all about with this Aries energy. We're really being called to be the warrior, you know, stand in your truth, you know, look at where there's imbalance when you're reflecting on that Libra energy, you know, where, where do we need the courage to stand up for ourselves and begin to really, really speak out. Um, and, and it's not going to be the same for everybody as far as what they're willing to do, but you know, you can just really lead by example. And that's just really important because all these planetary alignments are connected to our physical body. And when we're not doing the inner work and we're not really clearing or purging and we get kind of stuck in it all, and, and, and it's a time to like really step into and integrate something. And we're not aware of that. And we're not really sure of what's going on. You know, our physical body is going to start to send symptoms, right? Like, like, for example, if the North node is in Aries and we're not doing that work to step into our sense of ego identity, that's based in our own truth, based in our connection with what our soul is telling us, what our intuition is telling us, we might notice that you know, we have adrenal burnout or we have headaches or, you know, that could also mean that we're going through an upgrade and like things are kind of resetting themselves in the face of like a consciousness shift. But 
it's really important to understand how the signs and the planets impact our physical body so that when we do come across a physical symptom, we can begin to, um, you know, work with it and understand the storyline behind it, understand the energy behind it, understand a belief system or a trauma or some kind of agreement or some sort of something behind why this part of your body is being impacted. The sun now is in cancer, right? So there might be an exacerbation of people um, having physical symptoms surrounding this kind of energy. You know, if you look at the different organs connected to this and, and just kind of look at this chart, if you're having any physical symptoms, um, yeah, this really helps. Gemini, shoulders, arms, hands, upper ribs, lungs, trachea, bronchi, capillaries, breath, oxygenation of blood, you know, our breath, our throat chakra, you know, porous, neck, throat, palate, larynx, tonsils, lower jaw, ears. I mean, Scorpio, right? Bladder, urethra, genitals, and Ephiacus, Ephiacus, the 13th sign, which is the great alchemist in the chart, which is now available to us. You know, are we having trouble with this activation of Kundalini? Are we having a difficult time integrating that energy to help us to purify the rest of all these signs? Because the ether energy is what purifies the inner elements. So Pluto retrograde will go direct in October back into Aquarius in 2024. During the bifurcation of time, our inner energetic integrity is being tested. This is the time to take stock stock of how well we are coping with the madness of the earth as the collective mind of humanity travels the dark night of the soul. Um, and this is really what we've been dealing with on a collective level. And we all hold different parts of it when we navigate our own personal lives. And the more we step up to the plate and just go through this process, the more we impact the collective in a beautiful and profound way. Um, so bifurcation of time, Lisa Renee talks about this. Uh, this is from her website. So this unstable low frequency energy is where they want to hold us with the divide and conquer, pitting us all against each other with all the different tactics that they use, as we know. And so this is the big test. Are we going to allow that to get the best of us? Can we really, really hold love in the face of division, in the face of you know, everything that is destabilizing people. And, you know, of course the high frequency, which is the ascension energy, um, which is more stable is, is love. And that's a high frequency. When we look at power versus force and the scale, uh, the Hawkins scale, and we see the different levels of energy connected to frequency, we know that the lower energies, you know, are very much in the fear, very much in the division, very much in just misplace anger very much in the contamination of the elemental energies and the shadow energies of these planetary alignments that the psyops and the false flags and the mind control and the social engineering is wanting to hold us in, which really is what we would be enabling by letting our creative imagination and our creative energy and our thought forms um, in reaction to it, like hold us down. And so a lot of people are are slipping into that. Um, and so most of us that are here listening that are holding this greater stability um, are, 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 for me, like I redundantly say, are like the 5D tower right now because we're the override frequency. We are the greater technology in maintaining this high frequency and finding stability and just maintaining a certain level of neutrality while just, handling and dealing with whatever needs to be dumped, reevaluating relationships and reevaluating where you are in life and being willing to change and holding a greater trust in yourself and cosmic and natural law and what these initiations are really providing as discomforting as they can be, you know, that is the stable energy. It's moving us into the energies of courage, of love, of wisdom, of strength, you know, and so when we harness that Aries energy, which many already have in their own personal chart, in their own personal lives, but when we do it as a collective and we see more people willing to just take action, 
um, and, and, and take action and stand up for yourself and where you're just still being a people pleaser and saying yes to this or that, or consenting to this or that, you know, you will recognize that your solar plexus, your ego identity is holding the stability of a greater integration of the polarity within you and the love that you need to hold in order to be that 5D tower where your words hold an energy that can um, offset the dark technology. Because anybody that's working in the low frequency energy, you know, wants to be in victim consciousness, wants to be very reactive, wants to be in battle mode, um, wants to choose sides, wants to be I'm right, you're wrong. And that would be negative ego, right? So when we move into this Aries energy, we want that Aries energy to no longer be holding negative ego patterns or or the lower octave energies of the Mars, which can be very uh, narcissistic, egocentric, very self-absorbed, right? So we want to reflect upon the Libra that wants balance and harmony and justice and then stand strong in embodying that because we're here to integrate polarity. And every time the nodes show us south node, like it's been Scorpio, north node Taurus, that's the integration of polarity. And so in our personal charts, the south node and north node are saying on a soul level, these are the polarities that your life purpose and your soul path wants you to integrate. As a collective right now, we're integrating the polarity of Libra and Mars. Can we be in relationship with others and with life, strong in who we are? Can we learn how to be respectful of others without giving our power away, without being a doormat, without being taken advantage of? Can we utilize the properties of both signs and bring them together in unification so that we're not too polarized on one side or the other. And that's why looking at a chart is so amazing because if the one part of the chart talks about soul purpose and it has to do with coming in with something to then step into the opposite to integrate, then we know obviously that this is what we're here to do on a soul level. And this is what we're here to do as a humanity in order to evolve. Because if we don't, and we're still in duality, we're in the low frequency instability. So the integration of polarity and what the nodes show us is where the greater work is. All the other planets are assisting this process, right? So as we emerge into this polarity integration of Libra, Aries, Saturn, and Pluto going into retrograde, what is it that we have to let go of in order to make this possible? And what, what needs to die? What needs to be just release from our lives so that we're no longer hooked into something that is bringing us down into this instability, this low frequency. And I don't see it so much as a split. I see that the two timelines that are splitting do have a, still a connection, but, but the energetic cords are no longer there. There's no longer any more energy drainage. There's no longer you know, carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. There's no longer battling these outer forces or like feeling like you have to wake everybody up or just being in just all the information of what's coming from outside of you. You're more in the embodiment. You're more the living victory of what this greater work is just encouraging us to do because, you know, we got to just really take care of ourselves. It's, it's a lot to just um, shift the collective by um, being in battle with others. Obviously, um, it's the inspiration of li like living your life and leading by example, so that when people realize and hit that wall and realize, wow, this inverted system is taking me nowhere. When they finally wake up to it, they see that you know we're just holding the resource. We're living the embodied lifestyles that um, are are showing that you know if we can do it, so can they. And this is why we're going to come together more and more as a community to make sure that when we need that support, when we need to transition out of all of it, that we have people that we can count on to um, just be a source of strength and, and, and remembrance and, you know, all the options of people that are establishing me like communities and farms and living off the grid. And I mean, this is happening all over the world. 
And, and if we don't realize it's just right under our nose, we might not answer to it. And we might only notice the things that reinforce the anxiety or the survival energy or the discomfort of, you know, whatever it is we're letting go of. And again, um, I'm talking to all sorts of people here and so many that are well on their way and have been or were born that way. And some that might still feel that no matter how awake you are, you still got like one foot in the mud and you don't know where you're heading. Um, or what you're doing. But again, the synchronicities, the magic and the flow are in this high frequency. This is what the ascension energy is all about. 